welcome or welcome back to my channel everything good about life in case you're new here my name is Sylvia so today guys I bring you the wedding hats to have a wedding on a budget yeah the simplest wedding this is for people who want to save and mostly these are the hats I learned while doing my own wedding uh, some things I, I figured out before the wedding but some I had to find out after, right? Okay, so let's go right in. The first one, don't go to a bridal shop, right? Bridal shops are usually expensive. We all know that weddings are expensive. And for some reason, everything is hyped up, like the prices. If you look at the makeup, Makeup for bridal services is usually more expensive than makeup for regular services. So, if you go to a bridal shop, you're going to find high prices, which I don't understand why. For example, in my wedding, when I was I was looking for the bridal bras. Now I went to the bridal shop and I was told something. The first one I I went to, I was told six thousand. I'm like, what? Is that a price for me to negotiate or who buys something at 6,000 shillings? Then there was another one. I think that one was like a whole lingerie. That's why it was 6,000. Because I went to another shop and I was told uh, 3,000 shillings. I remember I went online to look for them and the cheapest I could get, I think, was around 2,000 or 1,500 shillings. Then I went to this normal shop and I found a bridal bra at 600 shillings. Guys, 600 shillings, that's like way off. <laughs> I know, so I saved a lot. The second one, the second thing, buy your own food. Now, this one, I wouldn't talk out of experience because I, I had too much to do. I was doing everything on my own, so buying my own food was just something else I was adding up. So I figured that is that's going to be too much for me to handle. But a friend of mine actually bought their food and they saved quite a lot. If you buy your own food, the only thing the caterers are going to charge you is the labor and probably their items, like the utensils and the sufurias. That's the only thing they're going to charge you and you're going to sell like more than half the price you would have paid if they were coming with their food. Which also means you're going to, to feed a lot of people because you're bringing in a lot of food on your own. And the food is cheaper. You just, you, you, you just ask the, the caterers, they'll tell you where to buy meat if you're doing meat and well, rice you're going to buy it in kgs, 50 kgs. It's 50 kgs a lot. <laughs> but you're going to buy it in bulk, which means you're going to sell. So buying your own food also sells. Another point, you can buy stuff on the street. Yeah? For example, earrings. This, this goes for people who usually don't put them on. You know, you're going to buy something and probably you're going to put it on again, never, or once in a year or something like that. So if you buy the original earrings, like if you, you you go to the shop like the earrings i was looking at while i was shopping for my own wedding were around 600 shillings and they were very good but then when you go to the streets and to the streets i don't mean the the two small shops on the streets no i mean the streets these people who are usually being chased with the hawkers those guys yeah so you will find the same earrings, of, or of course they are going to be knockoffs, but you're going to find them on the streets and they are usually cheaper, probably 50 shillings. Now, if you're someone who is not into earrings, you're just going to wear them on that day only, right? So it won't hurt and no one is going to know the difference between the 600 shillings earrings and the 50 earrings, right? Don't ask me Zanguni <laughs> Zapesagani. <laughs> that's my secret <laughs> okay now uh, uh, with the necklaces then I uh, rarely find necklaces on the streets but you can try the small shops they are also usually no horse and I don't think I would advise you to go for those necklaces because 
they are they are knockoffs but they're expensive simply because someone is paying for that shop they'll have to add that amount on the ear on the on the necklaces so yeah go to the streets guys buy them in secret no one will know another point <clears throat> another point is your wedding night this is something i discovered later now there's always this huge deal about where you spend on your wedding night oh which hotel did you go to did you go to your honeymoon immediately you, you were out of your reception or whatever whatever a it's not a big deal guys it's not a big deal you can lie to someone oh i would lie with a straight face and tell you i went to okay i can't come up with a good <laughs> a good hotel right now but guys if you don't have money if you don't have money you should not budget for the place you're going to spend on your wedding night simply because people are too curious to know where you are they're not even supposed to know that that's intimate so go spend anywhere a hotel worth three thousand shillings or even in your own house the house you're going to live in go sleep there whoever is judging you it's their own problem they should pay for it for where they want you to stay you get so that's another place you can save a lot of money right you don't need these expensive things if you cannot afford it if you can afford it well and good okay another place you can save a lot of money <laughs> is with your bridal team now i know this is up for debate because there are people who like love a long lineup like a, a long bread on lineup i have seen a bride on tv who had <laughs> like 14 people on the lineup and those were 14 girls i'm assuming the boys were also 14 to match up like jesus I, I don't know how to handle that anyway when you do a short bread on lineup it means you're going to spend less in terms of uh, transportation, in terms of where they're going to sleep, in terms of the food they're going to eat. Now, I know people offer vehicles for the wedding, but <laughs> I would advise you not to count on them because people change. Like in the morning, something might come up actually. The vehicle might refuse to start, something like that. Or someone would offer you a vehicle so that you depend on them and then in the morning they refuse to pick up your phone or they go silent like their phone is off yeah or they just come up with an excuse that you will know he's just lying or they are just lying but there's nothing you can do about it and it's the morning of your wedding and you don't have a vehicle to transport your people see now like as a bride i would advise you please have your own vehicles right don't depend on people people will bring vehicles yes the those who don't have transport will, will use them but don't depend on them so if you have a long lineup and you're hiring vehicles you get how that's going to affect your budget okay another point now this one, hey, people are going to kill me with this. But there's this tradition where, especially the brides, there's money set aside that's sent home to bring the people from home to come to your wedding. Right? Hey. <sighs> My sister, that's a waste of money. Seriously, it's a waste of money. And I can promise you I didn't do that. Mostly because I was on budget anyway. But... I did not do that because it's not necessary. If you want to come to my wedding, find you no know, means of transport. I have invited you because I would really love you to come to my wedding. I know. But if you don't have a means of transport to come, I will understand. I will not hold it against you. There's no rule that says you must come to my wedding because it will not happen if you're not there. No, as long as the groom is there, the bride is there, everything is perfect and the pastor is there of course everything is perfect all the other people are just witnesses and people to make the day more celebratory or more enjoyable something like that you don't have to send money home yeah because when we were doing that budget and i was told uh five thousand shillings will five thousand shillings be enough to bring people from home i'm like oh, 
give me that 5,000 shillings, I add on my gown so that I have a grand gown that I will love my pictures. <laughs> you, you get. I'm not going to transfer people from home and it's not because uh, I don't want them there or I have a very bad heart. It's because I'm on budget and I really, really need that money. So please find your own transport. Come to my wedding and celebrate with me. If you are not able to come because you don't have transport, I will understand. I will be okay with that. Right? Okay. Now bring the comments. <laughs> Those who disagree with me, bring the comments. Anyway, the next next point. I don't even know which number I'm at. Now the next point. Uh, <laughs> don't use one service provider. No, this is not about a budget but it's actually a hack and i know there's there are people who have used one service provider and it has worked i actually know of a couple that used one service provider and it was perfect but i own i know like five more couples that used one service provider and their wedding was a mess right now the thing with one service provider is not because the service provider cannot be trusted or anything like that the thing is, if anything happens, everything is going to be delayed. You know, if this service provider gets in trouble, everything collapses because you are relying on one person. It's normally not a good idea. Also, if you have one service provider and they are actually not going to do the job well, you get. They, they are not up to the task or they are just... There are just some service providers who are out there to get the money and they don't care if they have done a good job or not. So if you get that service provider and they do a shoddy job for you, everything is going to be a mess. Like there was a wedding I went and they used one service provider to provide everything, the chairs, the tents, the foods, the what. The food was late. <laughs> the, tent, the tents were falling down. Like every time they were falling down and then they have to be like, uh rehooked again in fact the word you see like the wedding was a mess the bride was so angry i don't think she she enjoyed her wedding at all at all so i would i would rather use different people so that if you're going to have bad food at least the decor is done to perfection you know that's my reasoning but it's up to you to choose your service provider and to choose whatever you're going to do for your own wedding okay another point for hacks the gowns i will, I will not stop stressing on these things the gowns are usually very ugly guys yeah the gowns are usually very ugly especially if you're going for the ball gowns and these other straight ones i don't know the, the name they're usually very ugly but this the service providers for the gowns the sellers they already know they've been in this business so they know what is good and also, just looking at you, they know your shape and they know which gown is going to fit you. Now, that doesn't mean they should choose a gown for you. Of course, you're going to choose something you love because it's you, it's your day. But if they show you a gown, no matter how much you hate it, don't resist to put it on. You get, just put it on and look at it. You'll be surprised. That's how I got my Although for my gown, I told my service provider that I don't want anything else, anything that is not ball gown. Bring all the gowns you want, but don't bring anything that's not ball gown because I've wanted a ball gown since I was a little kid and that's all I've ever wanted. So I didn't want them to bring this other gown so that I start now, they confuse me and I don't know what to choose and what not to choose exactly. But listen to them. Put on that gown and you will be surprised. I promise you, you will be surprised. Now the last, last and not least. This is important, guys. Think only about you. I mean, the couple. You as a couple, what is making you happy? The other people will get over it. If you're going to have a successful wedding, please make sure it's your day. Don't do things that are going to make the other person happy. Don't use roses instead of lilies because oh you your you, your friends friends like 
lilies. I I'm even confused about what I'm saying. <laughs> but you get you get what I mean. Yeah, do do what you do. You know, if if it's about food, okay, food I understand. You're not supposed to bring the food that only you love. You will bring a variety anyway. But when it comes to the deco and the dresses and everything, everything you want in your wedding, it's supposed to be about you. Especially if these other people are not helping to pay. You know, when they're helping to pay, it becomes something else. But if you're the one providing, like, your, your, the money is coming out of your own pocket, then just think about yourself, you as the couple. The other people are going to get over it, right? Now, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to talk so much about things that are not even about wedding hacks or wedding on budget, but that's the end of this. So if you have any other hacks, if you have any other way someone can save on their wedding so that people can actually do weddings, please comment down below, leave a comment, tell people what you did in your wedding or what you saw in someone else's wedding or even the wedding shows or television. Anyway, this has been everything good about life. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like and hit that notification bell. Leave some love guys. Bye.